نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن تعذبهم فإنهم عبادك وإن تغفر لهم فإنك أنت العزيز الحكيم قال الله هذا يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك الفوز العظيم لله ملك السماوات والأرض وما فيهن وهو على كل شيء قدير صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى جاب التوفيق to fast to come for salah to listen to his words and the words of his prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم کا نام آنے پر صلى الله عليه وسلم کہہ لینا چاہیے ایک مجلس میں کم از کم ایک مرتبہ کہنا واجب ہے اور بعض علماء کے نزدیک جتنی مرتبہ بھی رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا نام نامی آئے ہر مرتبہ پر دروش شریف پڑھنا واجب ہے اور اس زمن میں ہمیں وہ حدیث ذہن میں رکھنی چاہیے in that context of reciting درود on رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم we need to keep the words of that hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took steps on the member and he said Ameen and one of those three prayers of Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam was that the, the person destru- destruction be for the person in front of whom my name is mentioned and he does not recite durood on me تو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے نام نامی آنے پر نام مبارک آنے پر دروش شریف پڑھنے کا احتمام کرنا چاہیے عادت بنانی چاہیے May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming here Today we are starting مدنی سورہ بقرہ was مدنی آل عمران was مدنی نساء and مائدہ were also مدنی تو after these four سورہ that were revealed in مدینہ منورہ the next two surahs that are coming are Makki surah. And you will see the difference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to read Quran with tadabbur, with faham, with understanding, or making, having this concern of learning the Quran with tarjuma and a bit of tafsir, as these sessions are giving us the, the opportunity of the same. We will see the difference in the Makki and the Madani Surah. Madani Surah, we talked about Munafiqoon, we talked about the other groups, the non-Muslim groups that were living in and around Madina Munawwara, the people of the book. We talked about Ahkam, we talked about laws, social laws, penal laws of the Islamic Sharia. So in Makkah Mukarrama, the message is very distinct and different from the message that we receive in the surahs that were revealed in Madina Munawwara. Madina Munawwara, Makkah Mukarrama did not have Munafiqeen. It didn't have any people of the book living there. What it had in front was a, a great number of people, very strong people, socially and politically very strong people compared to what Muslims were in Makkah Mukarrama. The people in Makkah Mukarrama, the opponent, Kuffar, were very strong. They were leaders. And in front of these leaders were, most of them were poor people, outsiders, immigrants, slaves, the lower portion of the society, with the exception of few few people, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Allah Taala Anhu, 
many of the people who accepted Islam in Makkah Mukarramah were poor people, were weak people. So Makkah Mukarramah ki surto mein jo mazmoon diya gaya hai, the lesson that has been given to us or that we see, that we find in the surahs that were revealed in Makkah Mukarramah has to do with what kind of opposition Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was facing. In Medina Munawwara, the opposition was coming from Munafiqoon. In Medina Munawwara, the opposition was coming from Ahli Kitab. In Medina Munawwara, opposition was coming from Arabi, the people who were living outside Medina Munawwara. In Makkah Mukarrama, the opposition was only one type. Mushrikeen. So the message of the Madani Surah is all about negating the idea, the concept of shirk and bringing them on the concept of Tawheed. So a review, a revision of Madani Surah will reveal that it doesn't have many ahkam. Seldom, rarely talks about people of the book. It does mention, but it does not do khitab to them. It does not address them. It brings them as a reference. Like in Surah A'raf, there is some mention of ahl kitab as well, but it's brought as a reference, not actually as an address to them. Like in Alif Lam Mim, we find Ya Bani Israel. You know, this is a khitab. This is addressing. Bani Israel are being addressed there. So in Makki Surah, message is all about negating shirk or establishing Tawheed. Tawheed ka ithbat, within the same context it talks about Risalat ka ithbat, establishment of Risala, prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ظاہر ہے اگر رسول کو مانیں گے تو پھر اللہ کو ایک مانیں گے نا جب رسول کو ہی نہیں ماننا تو پھر اللہ کی کہاں سے مانیں گے تو within the same context it's also coming the proofs of the risala prophet of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم are also in مدنی سورہ in مکی سورہ and one of the one of the core beliefs of Islam, something that keeps us straight on the right path, belief in Akhirah. These three fundamental beliefs, aqaid, are subject matter of Makki Surah. I read few verses from the very last verses of couple of verses from Surah Maida, I just could not move on to the next Surah without talking about what has been written about in Tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk. It has been mentioned by Abu Dharr radiallahu ta'ala anhu that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the entire night he recited in his salah in tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk this is the statement of Isa alayhi salatu was salam that he will mention on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be asking him are you the one who told them to worship you as a son or as their God and then he will say he will declare his his, uh, his, uh, his bara'ah. And he will say, I, you were there, I did not say anything like that to them. And then, Isa alayhi salatu was salam will say, in tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk. If you punish them, they are your slaves, they are your creation. Wa in taghfir lahum, and if you forgive them, you are all powerful. So basically, Isa alayhi salatu was salam will leave the matters in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You decide. Ya Allah, you're all powerful. If you want to punish them, they're your creation. You're the one who created them. It's up to you. 
And if you forgive them, you have the power to forgive. No one is going to ask you a question. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept on reciting this ayah throughout the night, throughout his salah. In the morning, Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked, he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I saw that you were the only thing that you recited last night was in tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk wa in taghfir lahum fa innaka antal azizul hakim and another riwayah says that he kept on crying as well he kept on crying while reciting these ayah another riwayah mentions that he kept on saying allahumma ummati ummati o oh allah my umma my umma allahumma ummati allahumma ummati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing all what was happening with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent down Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam to ask him what is the matter Allah ta'ala to muhabbat karte na Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam se mahboob hai na mahboob hai khuda what is the matter in that response he said Allahumma ummati Allahumma ummati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam again saying tell Muhammad that we will make we will make him happy regarding his ummah yani Allah ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko razi karenge Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki ummat ke bare mein and what is the concern of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding his ummah that how can they be forgiven on the day of judgment? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much ever we can thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this, that we, he, had, he had created us, he has, he has given us birth from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will not be enough to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of so many favors that we receive from Allah, this one great favor is that Allah is saying وَلَسَوْفَ رَبْ وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Surah Duha An Qareeb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Aapka Rabb Aapko Dega Ata Kar Dega Aapko Whatever you're looking for Allah will give it to you Allah will make you happy فَتَرْضَى And then you will be happy You will be pleased if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making that statement to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for us, how much love we, suppose we are to have for Allah and how much love we are to have for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No wonder many times, you know, we hear, we read in ahadith, sahaba kiram, ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi wa jama'een, used to say, used to call Rasulullah, used to answer Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying, fidaka abi wa ummi ya Rasulullah. That my parents be sacrificed on you. Look what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has earned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne hamare liye kya cheez Allah ta'ala se razi manwali. Ye manwala ho gaya na manwana samajhte. To out of love a person keeps on asking, begging, requesting, keep on saying, keep on saying this action of Continuous repetition, continuously requesting, requesting over and over again to someone that you love very much and you know that he will agree to it. This fail, this verb is called manana, manwana. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne hamare liye Allah ta'ala ko manwa liya, mana liya. Allah ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko razi kar denge inshaAllah. In tu'adzibhum fa innahum ibaduk wa in taghfir lahum. فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Surah An'am, as I said earlier, talks a whole lot about Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling creation towards oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses two types of ayat. Two types of reminders are used to call people towards oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To call people towards 
worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is tadkir bi ala illa. Ala, kabhi laf suna abne, ala i. Fabi ayyi ala i rabbikuma tu kadhiban. Ala ka matlab kya hota? Favors. Favors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses tadkir, reminder, using his favors, through his favors upon creation. I created this and I created the sun and the moon and I created the water and I created you as you are and I created this entire universe and so many things that you see and the rain and the animals some of them you ride, some of them you eat this is all tadkir bi ala illa reminder waaz nasihat calling us towards oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through ala illa through the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? The other type of reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to call people towards oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tadkir bi ayyamillah. Ayyam, kise kehte? Days. Yawmun nahar, ayyam nahar, ayyam tashriq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses days. What kind of days? Days in which, especially the days in which he destroyed nations, wiped out completely. Look how powerful I am. This is what happens when people don't listen to their prophets. This is called tadkir bi ayyamillah. Reminder through the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah A'raf. And there is a connection between Surah An'am and Surah A'raf. Surah An'am talks about all tadkir bi ayatillah. Allah Ta'ala ki nishaniya aayengi. Allah Ta'ala ke in'amat ki tafseel aayegi. Allah Ta'ala sawal poochhenge. Questions will be asked. Man rabbuk. Questions through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are asked in Surah An'am. And those questions are logic questions that a person will have to say that all of these things are done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eventually you will have to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and he doesn't need partners. In Surah A'raf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses tadkir bi ayyamillah wa ila aadin akhahum huda وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُّبِينٌ وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا قَوْمِ ثَمُود The people of Thamud, the people of Aad, the people of Shu'ayb, Madian, Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wa salam, the people of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, the people of Lut alayhi salatu wa salam, all of those nations that receive punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have been mentioned in Surah Araf. So one, we receive, we read about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An'am and the questions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking mankind, isn't this so? Isn't this so? Then should I be not your Rabb? And then in Surah Araf, the very next Surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives reminders through His powers, through the days in which previous nations were destroyed. You make the call. You make the call if you want to believe in Allah or not. And of course in between there are ahkam coming, there are, there is uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going through some emotional uh, uh, distress. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is receiving condolence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then after condolence, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reminded, okay, if you're not going to, 
If you think that something else will work, try that. Right? So in in context of rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the favors that receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the surah starts with Alhamdulillah alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wal nur. Tamam tarifi Allah ke liye hai. Iska matlab simply yeh simply means that even if the creation was was not in habit of doing tarif or did not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves tarif well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who deserves tarif by default doesn't matter if the creation does the tarif or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds all praises for himself Alhamdulillah Alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal ard the one who created the heavens and the earth. وَجَعَلَ الظُّلُمَاتِ nur, And also made darknesses. Different types of darknesses are there. And the light. Meaning none of this that we see around ourselves or that we cannot see because of our limited sight, none of them are self-existent. Everything has an origin. And that origin goes back to the power of power of the creation of Allah of of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala creating them. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi khalaq al-samawati wal-ard. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created this huge, this entire universe. Samawat, the seven heavens, and Ard, although there are seven uh, planets as well. But in Arabic language, Ard sometimes is also used in place of plural. The singular form also comes and serves as the same. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal-ard, waja'ala al-dhulumati wal-nur. And he also made darknesses. There are different types of darknesses. Okay? Darkness of kufr, darkness at night, darkness when there is moon outside. Darkness when there is no moon, darkness within the bottom of the sea, in the bottom of the sea. These are all different types of darknesses. Summa Ladina Kafaru bi Rabbihim Yadilun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then they go away from their Lord. Even though I'm the one who has created all of this system that they see around themselves, yet they refuse to accept me as their Rabb. They refuse to accept me as their Rabb. In the next ruku' of Surah An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking a question. مَنْ يُسْرَفْ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ فَقَدْ رَحِمَهُ It's actually not a question, I apologize. It's a statement made. Anyone who has been protected on the day of judgment from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَقَدْ رَحِمَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has shown His mercy to him. وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ mubin. And then it says, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to stop the harm coming to us, there is no one who can cause that harm. This is something to do with the aqeedah. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ and if he stops some good coming to us, فَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over everything. The ayah before this last one talks about raham. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raheem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind 
that when Musa alayhi salatu was salam and Harun alayhi salatu was salam were being sent to Fir'aun to remind him of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who was Fir'aun? Fir'aun was the one who had said out loud, open, Ana rabbukumul a'la that I am the best Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending Musa and Harun alayhi salatu was salam and giving him instructions فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى When you go meet him, be kind in your words, be gentle. Maybe because of kind words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knew that Fir'aun will not <coughs> believe in him. This is a lesson for us as teachers, as instructors, as elders, that when we are giving reminders to people, kindness is necessary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending Musa and Harun alayhi salatu wasalam to Fir'aun who said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la with instructions to be kind. Qawla layyina, naram baat kehna. Naram baat kehna, sakht baat mat karna, naram baat karna. One of the arif, the people who know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who know the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving instructions to his prophets to be kind in words with the person, with the man who said, Ana rabbukumul a'la, how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with a person who puts his forehead in the sajda and says, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. The Arif is reminding us of Allah's mercy. Wa rahmati wa si'at kulla shay. Shaykh is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he is giving instructions to be kind with his enemy, how would he deal with us on the day of judgment? when we have said subhana rabbi al-a'la in the form of sajda subhanallah this is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is how we learn about we learn about how kind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be on the day of judgment just because we are uh, followers of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam one story that i had promised to share two days ago i can bring it today Inshallah. I believe it was Harun Rashid, his, uh, in his town or in his city, wherever he was, there were three or four thieves. As I said the other day, I could not find the reference of this, of this waqiyah. And they were causing a lot of trouble to the citizens. And no one could get them. These thieves had very special qualities. One of them was blessed to open any kind of lock with only something in his hand. Anything that came to his hand, he could open any lock. That was his specialty. So be it the lock of Harun Rashid or you know the king or anywhere else, he could just enter that place and open the lock in no time. The other one could hear anything close by or far away if it was directed towards them. So he was a good secret service. The third one could see in the darkness. So they had all the qualities of Mahir Chor, any expert thieves. One could see pitch black dark and he can take you out of the problem. Right? If somebody is coming before someone comes over, the thief with the with the with the power to listen, the slightest noise he will hear it. 
and he will inform and in the meanwhile the one who is able to open up all the locks quickly he will open and they will run away and the person who was able to see in the darkness he will guide them and get out and no police no nothing could be could be done to catch them Harun Rashid was citizens were troubled and he was also troubled he was like I have to get them and he changed his outlook and he became like you know a completely different person and he went out and he never disclosed his identity and it just happened that he met one of the thieves and he made friends with them so the thieves told them told him that look we are thieves now you know about us if you want to be part of our group you have to have something really special i forgot to mention another word person the fourth one from the thief if he would see someone he would never forget his face i should have said that before the fourth of the thief was that if he sees someone he could never forget his face so they the three thieves told harun rashid that now if you have to be part of our group you have to have something special and now since you know about us either you have to tell us something really special about you or we are going to kill you he said okay if you have these qualities i have some quality as well said, what is your quality he said if i shake my beard the person hanging by the order of the king can be protected the person hanging by the order of the king ready to get killed he is protected subhanallah you know what else you wanted no fear now so they joined the group and of course in the very first night harun rashid had planned it they were arrested the three or the four people never knew what happened they were all separate but when they were brought in the court the next day one person was missing the three people were there the original three thieves were there the fourth one the one with the beard guy was not there so the public is seeing them and now they are doing iqrar yes did you commit that crime yes i committed that crime or and there two of them are crying and they know harun rashid is you know he's going to kill them they're crying and they're begging and they're saying you know please forgive us we made a mistake we will not do and the third one the one who was able to see in the dark and never forget anything because of course he could see it but never forget it he was calm and he was looking at harun rashid So Harun Rashid said these two people are shivering why aren't you shivering why aren't you begging aren't you ashamed of what you did aren't you scared of what's going to happen to you he said i've seen you somewhere he said where did you see me he said i can't tell you that but i've seen you somewhere i can't say who you are of course he's scared that he doesn't want to call the king the khalifa a thief he said all i know is that i met someone who said that the beard movement could prevent someone from getting killed from the order of the king and i i have seen you somewhere and that's why i'm not scared i know something is going something is strange going to happen this is one of the waqiyat that have been written by our scholars by our elders and the lesson from this waqiya is that the thief who was presented in front of khalifa and khalifa is ready to chop their heads off one of the thieves knows that the king made that statement and king never goes against his statement and he said that i believe in the king's statement to be true that if he shakes his head if he shakes his beard i will not be killed i believe in firm 
firm belief into this statement. Harun Rashid forgave them all. What is the lesson for us? This is the connection, this is the belief, this is the, this is the bonding that we have, that we need to create with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between me and my Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to forgive us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us, will give options to first Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask for intercession. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give options to intercede for shafa'ah to ulama, to sulaha, to shuhada, to huffad. And then after all of the intercession will be completed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out the people who are doomed, who are in Jahannam by His own will and power. The people who are in Jahannam will be taken out. What kind of people will be taken out? Anyone who has smallest portion of Iman, of Tawheed in his heart. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين